Well, here in Spain, Chris McCann joins me again this week. How are you doing, Chris? I'm very well, thanks, Howard. It's good to be back. <laughs> yes. Okie dokie. Well, some of our listeners may have experienced investors with a strategic portfolio in place. Others may have just built up their investments randomly over the years, buying shares or funds here and there. Or perhaps they have money sitting in the bank, such as a house sale or an inheritance. So we're going to ask Chris for his advice on how to build a portfolio, a suitable portfolio. So Chris, let's start at the beginning. How should people get started? Whether it's with a new money to invest or taking a fresh look at what they have. Okay, well, we live in a world where the number of investment choices continues to rise exponentially. In Just to give people a bit of perspective, in 2002, there were around 30,000 managed investment products to choose from. But since over the next, over the following two decades, the number of investment choices has grown exponentially to being currently around 742,000. Today, investors are exposed to more information than any previous generation. Data and research that has only been available to financial professionals is now freely accessible. And, and this inevitably brings advice and news from sources that might not be qualified to serve your interests. So when it comes to investing, having too much choice will most likely hurt you rather than help you if you don't have proper expert guidance. This being the case, I always strongly recommend seeking specialist financial advice. Having a trusted financial advisor will help you to avoid what's what I call decision paralysis. And it will ensure that you preserve your wealth and maximise your financial opportunities. Can you take us through the process with new investment clients? How do you help them establish what will work for them? What sort of things do they need to look at? In brief, uh, to be able to put an investment plan together, you need to start by having a conversation about your situation and objectives. You need to ask several questions such as, what stage of life are you at? What assets do you currently own? How much risk are you comfortable taking? What are you trying to achieve? What your current circumstances and future plans are? And only with the answers to questions such as these can we begin to help you navigate the increasingly complex marketplace uh, that exists and build a suitable portfolio. When providing investment advice, how important is clients' behaviour? This, this is a really interesting part of the process. Client behaviour or investor behaviour is, is key to ensuring that clients achieve higher, long-term, real-life rates of return than the average investor. This being the case, uh, of the six investment principles that we follow, three of them are basic, what we call basic attitudinal approaches, which take place in the mind of the investor rather than inside the portfolio. I'm going to go through the three. The first principle is faith in what, what we call faith in the future, which put simply is the only worldview that squares with the historical record. Optimism or faith in the future is the only realism, or in other words, long-term pessimism is deeply counterintuitive and rarely profitable. I'm yet to meet a pessimist that has made money on a continual basis. The second principle is patience. We live in an age of late-breaking market news, and this places the investor under constant pressure to do something. The more an investor gives into the fads and fears of the moment, the more they lose sight of their long-term financial goals and the more mistakes they make and the more their long-term return falls. Finally, the third principle is discipline. Patience dictates a decision not to do something wrong. Discipline, on the other hand, is the decision to keep doing the right things. The, uh, the undisciplined investor reacts they allow their long-term investment plans to be derailed 
by, by a friend, event, and the plan inevitably fails. When providing investment advice, you mentioned that you follow six investment principles. You've talked about the three behavioural principles. What are the other three principles? Yeah, look, the remaining three principles are, are all practices or, or methods of managing the portfolio. First is asset allocation. The, the timing and selection culture in, in which we live maintains that portfolio return is predominantly a function of which investment one owns and when. In actual fact, in the long run, timing and selection have very little to do with portfolio returns. A far greater determinant is asset allocation. Over the course of an investing lifetime, the big swing in portfolio returns comes from what percentage of your holdings are in equities. All you have to do is look at the difference between the long-term return of equities and those of bonds, real assets and cash to see that it must be the case. The next step is to get broadly diversified or spread your assets. Diversification involves the spreading of risk and reward within an asset class. Disciplined diversification in its essence means you'll never own enough of any one thing to make a killing in it, and you'll, but more importantly, you'll never own enough in any one thing to be killed by it. Third, and the last of these portfolio practices is rebalancing the portfolio back to the original desired weightings, which, is, which typically occurs annually around the same time. It will unfailingly cause the disciplined rebalancer to secure a better return than do the huge preponderance of other investors. Now taken together, following the six principles should ensure that clients earn the returns that they will need to fund their most important lifetime goals with the minimum expenditure of time, energy and stress. For our listeners on Talk Radio Europe, can you remind us about the Blevins Frank seminars you have in my part of Spain? Will they have an investment section? Yes, we are, we are holding a seminar in La Vinuela on the 29th of October and in Salobreña on the 30th of October. And we will be covering several topics in relation to growing, protecting and passing on your wealth. As well as speakers from Blevins Franks, there will be a guest speaker from Rathbone Asset Management, one of our investment partners, who will be sharing their outlook for the investment markets. So if people are interested in attending, I suppose the website is the place to book. Uh, people can find out more about the seminars on our website, blevinsfranks.com. Uh, and if they wish to reserve a place, they can. They can also access the contact details of all our local partners and also if they would like to speak to us about any of these topics that we raise in during our broadcast they can complete a contact form on the website and somebody from Blevins Franks will be in touch to arrange the most suitable next step. Many thanks Chris always interesting speak soon. Thank you Howard speak again soon bye for now.